I don't know if you saw this. I believe it was Wall Street Journal. Mike Pence and Pompeo jointly wrote an op-ed, we must strike Iran. Why must we That's strike insane. anyone? What is this mentality of consistently seeking to strike someone? But see, again, money flows once you have a boogeyman. This is, again, I don't need to preface this with, well, this is not in defense of Iran. That's not what this conversation is about. Why must we keep resorting to striking anyone? Why must we keep resorting to bombing anyone into submission? But that is the way of the alleged international rules-based order that we have created. And it is based in rules for thee, but not for me. And it is pure power. We And, and we must op be open about this. War is not fair and war is not meant to be fair. It is a power trip. And yes, we are an extremely powerful nation or have been up until so many decades ago. But what we have done now, and we will not stop un unless American people somehow find a way to stop it. Uh, our politicians don't know any other way and they are so arrogant and ignorant. And that is the worst possible combination that they don't know any other way, you know, with some examples that I have just mentioned, the younger guard that's coming up that understands that we must stop this madness. But again, going back to Mike Pence and Pompeo, let's strike Iran. And I know that they have hundreds, if not thousands of political establishment allies who are ready for such nonsense. So I have to be optimistic, but I am optimistic in a way where it's going to get very dark, much darker than it is. It seems like everything is calm. We are in an election year. You know, things are meant to start getting crazy and they're not. It's very quiet. It's not Almost summer yet, though. They, they usually wait till that. summer to unveil most of those things. Remember 2020? I, exactly. So for now, it's eerily quiet, like ahead of something, ahead mm -hmm. of some huge calamity that may be coming our way, but who knows? I may be wrong and I may be, um, you know, we, we may just get to November and have an election and try to fight it out. But again, they've got those machines. <laughs> well, I, I would, I would say to our audience too, if, if you, if you haven't heard of it, it's a, it's a very old video now at this point, I think it's like the early two thousands, but, um, go on YouTube and look for the West Clark seven, um, and it talks yes. about ending with Absolutely. Iran. Iran is kind of the final, you know, thing they've wanted to go to. This is, this is a plan they've been working on for a very long time. There just kind of been a bunch of hiatuses in the middle because it wasn't as quick and easy as they thought it would be. It is, and uh, Wesley Clark has laid it out, and he was even shocked himself. But you know, I'm sure he was shocked for a few minutes, and then he embraced it. And just. To, to that point that you mentioned earlier, and Tucker mentioned it, how Putin was asking Bill Clinton to um, join NATO and uh, Russia effectively would have been part of an alliance that was meant to protect itself from Russia. Sure. Uh, once the Soviet Union collapsed, and I know we had a conversation about this, once the Soviet Union collapsed, NATO was deemed unnecessary. Correct. So NATO really didn't have a role anymore. After the Warsaw Pact, there was really nothing for NATO to do because as a defensive alliance, it had a specific job. It had specific jurisdictions. After that, there was nothing for it to do. But see, the generals and all those who have benefited greatly from the transfer of wealth and the transfer of money through NATO and all of these other organizations have gotten so used to this fabulous life that they were leading uh, that they needed to reinvent NATO. And this is where Yugoslavia came into play. And this is where this whole concept of balkanization came into play. NATO picked the Balkan region because it was very ripe to do shenanigans that are very divisive, which is exactly what they are doing to us now. It's very easy to play this divisive role to keep people completely in a state of fear, in a state of chaos. And ever since then, NATO has become much more offensive, much more aggressive. And I would argue NATO is not anymore the force for good. And I am pretty sure, and I know this for a fact, 
that President Trump is not fond of NATO. Uh, even Ambassador Rick Grenell has been saying that if you are not paying your 2%, you either don't get to vote or decide on um, admission of new members, or you actually don't get to be defended by the United States. Why should we put American lives and American taxpayer money into defense of these other nations? But again, it is the empire that we are defending, and it is the empire of the globalist elite that we are defending, and NATO is just yet another extended hand of theirs.